because Ann and I have been on vacation so that I, she could drop me off. And I left my car in Cave Springs. Or Cave, Cave Spring. That's where we spent the night last night. And then a hurricane came. No kidding. Hurricane Zeta. The eye went right over Cave Spring. So, taking me to the trailhead at Pine Glen campground, there's a tree over the road, so I'm having to walk the last mile and a, a quarter to the trailhead. So here's where the trail comes out of the woods. And I finished here less than a month ago. And I'm back now to finish all the way to Georgia. Nobody in the campground today. Hard to figure, just a hurricane. Two inches of rain last night made uh, Pine Creek pretty active today. So here we go to the trail, which is right here. The trailhead is right here. I have an idea that there'll be some tough stuff blown down by that hurricane as I go. So here we go, let's see what it's like. Hiking along a little creek is nice. I think this is Pine Creek. No, uh, I would guess that I probably have these woods to myself. Today, I bet everybody that's through hiking or anything else found a hotel for the night. Well, you have to take the good with the bad. Somebody's gonna have a great time sawing all this stuff out of the way. trail passes by this forest service lake that is off flood control. It also goes over the dam to this lake and you can camp there they say. So here I am at Laurel Shelter on the first day. It's 12 o'clock. Clearly too early to uh, camp, but it is a pretty place. This is Coleman Lake, which has a campground that the Forest Service maintains. The trail bypasses the campground, but you can stop. It's got a side trail. I'm trying to make it to the shelter, which is about four miles away. And it's about 3.08 in the afternoon. So, I may get there later than I want to. The first mountain climb of the day would be the last hour. Look at this present from the hurricane. So this is a flood control lake. And since it rained a bunch yesterday, it's pretty busy today. There's a good sight. About 15 miles is all my legs will do. And they are about done, but we are here. Friday morning and I'm in uh, section uh, 10 still with a mile and a half to go and this is the entrance to section 11 the Duggar Wilderness anyway this is the second wilderness that we have gone through on the Penhody the first one was the Chiaw Wilderness and you may remember there are not supposed to be any man-made objects in the woods. They just allowed you to blaze though again, thank goodness. So maybe the trail won't be so easy, won't be so easy to lose. You gotta remember too that you can't bring a chainsaw into a wilderness. So uh, somebody's gonna have to bring a cross-cut saw in here or an ax to get these things out of this, off this trail. Also, the trail's not blazed. They can blaze them, but nobody's gotten around to redoing it. I crawled under that one. So you crawl under them, you go over them, or you go up the mountain and go around them. Here we are at the halfway point of Section 11, Duggar Mountain the Wilderness. And you can probably hear the wind blowing. I think a front has followed the hurricane. The wind is sharp. 
Now there's the city of Piedmont and uh, somewhere out there is Highway 9 that runs across the end of that mountain. And you can hear the wind up here on Duggar Mountain. It is chilly. This side of the mountain has virtually no wind at all. And the temperature is very nice. So all you gotta do is go from the Piedmont side to the other side and the wind completely stops. Thus ends the Duggar Wilderness and starts section 12. I've hiked 10 miles today. I wish it was more, but I spent a little time dodging windblown trees and getting lost in the rock garden. Shelter six miles away that I'd like to spend the night in. It's 1.38, it's gonna be a race. So here's the first lake that I've seen since section 10. And this is another big one of those uh, flood light, flood control lakes. Here's the view from the dam that holds back the lake. So there's the waterfall for Ann. And this is a mountain goat trail that hangs along this little ridge pretty closely. Walking sticks help a lot. This is from the summit of Oakley Mountain. And uh, we have worked uphill all morning, all afternoon it seems like, to get up here to this thing. And now we're going down, I hope. I had to walk a quarter of a mile, or no, 0.4 miles one way to get that water. So there's no water here at the shelter. Today I guess I'll, I'll, won't go but about 12 miles. There's really no need. And then I think I can finish tomorrow on Sunday. I got a later start today than normal about. 8.30 and it's cold. This could be confusing. You come out on this trail, the Chief Lodaga Trail. There's the Chief Lodaga Campground, which has hot showers and this, that, and the other. And you can get there by going up here and turn to the right after about 100 yards. The trail itself follows this asphalt trail which goes all the way to Atlanta now. This is kind of a new twist, a paved trail. And this is the Terrapin Creek Bridge. This trail used to be a railroad. They took up the rails. So it's called a rail trail. So I guess that down there is Terrapin Creek. It's a pretty good sized creek. Well, all easy things must end. So the road walk's over. The asphalt walk is over. And now I hear there's a 600 foot climb ahead of me. So I climbed 600 feet. And uh, here we are crossing over the mountain. With lichens all over the rocks. And mosses all over the ground. They say the next climb is 700 feet, so maybe it'll be a, a mile or two away. We've got to cross the county road first and then 700 feet. So about halfway up to 700 feet. So far it hasn't been too bad, generally sloping upwards and uh, through a pine grove. 700 foot climb is over. We're at 1,871 feet. And the trail follows this ridge for a mile or two. So, I have finally made it to the top. It's been like a long climb. I think it's 700 feet. The views are nice. Walking along the ridge, you can see the, the views on both sides. I'll Audrey Ferguson donated this easement so the trail could actually go through here. Honor of her husband, uh, Robert R. Ferguson. 
so in 1993 it was made possible that the trail would, would continue on through here. I suppose we're out of the Forest Service land now. So here we are, coming off the mountain. I hope you can see the leaves are changing. It's really fall. I just passed a couple of families with young children trying to get over all the blowdowns that we just passed. The first people I've seen since the first day. This is a lonely old trail. They tell me there are two hikers in front of me, but generally if they're in front of me, I'll never catch them as slow as I am. This is the finish of section 12, and we're getting ready to start the last section of the Penhody in Alabama. First, a short road walk. Sure am glad he saw me. So the Penhody here is, owes its existence to private landowners. It's the state mineral, and that's the red stuff in the soil here. This is an old hematite mine. It's three o'clock and I'm at the shelter. I really wish the shelter was about a mile further on so I wouldn't uh, stop quite this early. But it's a good one. It's also got a road to it. I hope I don't have any visitors in a car. But the view is great. It's the best view I've ever seen in a shelter. The sun will be on me until dark, which is nice, instead of me being down in the valleys. The walk up here with the water that you gotta get 0.2 miles down there in the bottom, but straight up a hill. I think it's a great idea to build a shelter up on top of a mountain. The only problem is get water. You can see my old socks hanging out there. They're pretty worn out. In three days, I'm about to lose a toenail. And I think these shoes are, these boots are about the right size. The problem is, is going downhill. That toenail just cannot take going downhill. We're gonna have to figure out something to do about that. Pretty sunset. Does it still count as backpacking? If you, are watching Auburn just beat the brakes off LSU. <laughs> Josh Taylor. 48 to 3. Josh never did give nothing to the team. Hadn't missed anything. Also, we're eating ramen noodles and mashed potatoes tonight. We're not having any freeze dried anything. Except maybe ramen noodles. Well, goodbye to the Davis Mountain Shelter. Last night, every time I dozed off before 12 o'clock, people on four-wheelers and motorcycles were riding all over the place, making all kinds of noise and playing loud music. I wasn't real sure if they weren't going to come get in the bed with me in just a minute. Finally, about midnight, they left, and I got a little bit of sleep. So this morning when I woke up, it wasn't nearly as cold as I thought it would be, and I managed to get an early start. This is a nice place very hard to find the trail. They've got it blazed pretty good, but then the leaves will just obscure it completely. And so I've spent five or 10 minutes wandering around in circles looking for it. So I've come to the Hurricane Creek Bridge at the 4.9 mile marker. As we're headed to Georgia at about the 10 mile marker. Somebody actually stole this bridge a few years ago and they had to rebuild it. I don't know what kind of roguity joker would steal a bridge. Anyway, I guess this is Hurricane Creek, aptly named, because the water in it's from Hurricane Zeta. So here we go, five miles to the state line. 
I guess this is Hawkins Hollow Pond. Check this out. Well, there's a blaze, so I guess I'm in the right spot. That ladder was unexpected. So here's the creek that flows by Hawkins Shelter, Hawkins Hollow Shelter, pardon me. And this is a good one with a stream right there and running water. Not only is there a shelter here, but a little further on there's a tent platform. Shelter's down there. So as soon as you leave the tent platform, up you go. Trail had to have another rock garden before we got out of Alabama. This one's not too bad so far. You follow the side of it instead of trying to go over all that. Sometimes without a blaze, you wouldn't have a chance. This is the so-called 1700 foot overlook, which gives you a view of Georgia. And now, so this is Alabama, headed toward Little, Little River and Lookout Mountain. And then we swing all the way around past the dead end sign. And here's Georgia. Hody and others purchased this land and now it's part of Forever Wild. And so that's so the trail could finish all the way to Georgia. And this gives the Section 5 Rock Garden a run for its money. That was a long two miles over all those rocks. Good gracious. So we've reached the 10 mile marker which is here and we hope we can continue to find the trail it's tough and one tenth of a mile is Georgia all right here we are at Georgia so that's that completes the Alabama section in Hody. this is the last shelter in section 13 it had a near miss I thought when I walked up it had been destroyed but I believe it didn't hurt it a bit this trail finishes up with a mile or two through a pine thicket. 